All righty. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the September 18, 2018 meeting of the what, Pearl L. Crawford Memorial Library Board of Trustees. As is customary, we will open the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All righty. Um, we had a flurry of activity as far as email just this afternoon, in fact. So hopefully everyone has uh, had a chance to look at the revised agenda. Is that the one that came out this afternoon, Pat? Yeah, okay. just a couple of editions. All right. But that was the one that was posted. Okay. Yes, this is um, the one that was posted. I didn't get the revised one. Oh, okay. So I guess I do need one. All righty, Thank here you. we go. Anyone else? No? Okay. Yes. All right. Hopefully, uh, folks have had a chance to take a look at and review the July 24th, 2018 meeting minutes. Questions, concerns, or issues with pertaining to those meeting the minutes for the July 24th meeting? All right, so welcome. Thank you. All right, I entertain a motion to accept it. I make the motion to accept the minutes of July 24th. And second. Second. Any discussion? All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so moved. And the <laughs> highlight of the evening, the director's <laughs> report. <laughs> I'm sorry? We're going to do the executive session. Oh, yeah, okay. We did have, uh, there is another pending issue with regards to meeting minutes. And uh, I'm going to defer to Pat on that. And I think she has a motion that she would like to present. Yes, um, and this is on the executive session minutes uh, that were approved at our last executive session on July 24th and um, the motion I'm going to make is based on uh, information from the uh, mass.gov site uh, according to Mass General Law and also um, has been, I run this by a town administrator and um, he did agree with the way we should do this. Uh, I make a motion that our chairman, Richard Clark, be designated to review and to approve but not release the exec executive session minutes of July 24th on behalf of the trustees. Motion is made. Second, please. Second. Second. Okay. All those in discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Now for the highlight of the evening. I'm sorry. Okay. Got a lot of stuff here. <coughs> I, uh, I'm just going to hit some highlights from August and September uh, thus far, uh, rather than copying and pasting the whole thing because we've got so much going on and have had so much going on. Um, our summer reading program concluded in mid-August with 301 children, 20 teens, and 165 adults signed up. Um, that's uh, about what we see for children um, it's a few more teens and a lot more adults so um, so it was fun and it was busy on um, here's some highlights um, we had soap making on August 3rd um, we had 46 uh, people come in and make ducky soaps the the uh, theme for the summer reading program this year was libraries rock so we made duckies rock you know they had rock you know, like hairdos and things like that. And it was fun. It's, it's hard to explain. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it justice. Um, but anyway, uh, we had our Pearl Jam concert series on August 9th, number two. That was Mandeville and Richards. They're a local duo. Actually, it was a trio this time. And we had 30 people in attendance for that. 
On August 10th, we uh, hosted Tie-Dye Day again, and we had 47 people come to that, so that was all throughout the day, and everyone enjoyed that, had a good time. On August 16th, it was the finale of the summer reading, and it was the Toe Jam Puppet Band, and we had 85 people in attendance for that. That was pretty much all ages, <coughs> and I think everyone had a great time. It was my first time seeing them, and good. they were a riot. Yeah, I, I think we'll have them back in a heartbeat. Um, and then on August 20th, um, before people went off on vacation, we had uh, um, Michelle Montville come and bring her karaoke machine and hold a karaoke, her, sh her company is Karaoke for Kids, but really it's, you know, kids, teens, even adults, and we had 35 participate in that. So it was a busy July and August. Um, most of my July stuff I presented in the July meeting, so I didn't re rehash that. Um, and I'll have a little bit more about summer reading in the in the next meeting. I just have had so much going on. I, I haven't I haven't completed all my you know gathering of my statistics yet. Um, I've gathered them. I just haven't completely recorded every little nitty gritty detail. Um, and for the summer reading program, I just want to say a big thank you to the Hugh W. and Harriet K. Crawford Endowment for the Pearl Crawford Library. Uh, they hosted the entire, they sponsored the entire summer reading program, and um, we thank them. Uh, all the programs and materials and things like that came from uh, that um, grant, and there were also programs that were sponsored by Friends of the Library, <coughs> and so I want to say a big thank you to our Friends of the Library for um, all of their wonderful support of our programs and services. Um, so, I uh, moving along our upcoming. Um, Excuse me, if I may. Yes. One one, uh, one highlight, if you will, I think of September is the fact that we are open on Saturdays. Now. Right, exactly. So from ten to two on Saturdays. That's right. Um, starting on August, um, August, starting on September eighth, which was last a week ago Saturday, um, we opened with um, miniature golf. Um, and so that was my that was my last uh, highlight for September. Um, we had brought in mobile mini golf. We saw 35 uh, participants, and everyone seemed to enjoy themselves immensely. It was our first time hosting them. They go around to different libraries, and <coughs> we've seen them on the list serve. You know, directors and and library staff saying how much fun it was. They have a, a nine hole and an 18 hole, and we just did the nine hole. Um, and it worked out great. Even even with one third of the the kids' room shut down, we still were able to you know space the holes out throughout mm -hmm. the library. So so far so good. Um, coming up in um, October, on Friday, October fifth, um, we are um, holding. Let me just think. There's a couple of things coming up in September that I just want to hit that I don't have on here. Um, <coughs> this coming Thursday we have, um, we are showing a movie, um, on The Darkest Hour, and that starts at 5.45. And um, next week we have on Thursday evening, on, on Monday evening we have Liz, Liz Barber's Movable Feast to get coming back to do an Instant Pot class. That is full. And we also have a waiting list for that. Um, she only takes 35, and uh, it filled up pretty quickly. And we have about a half dozen people on a waiting list. So we'll be making those phone calls on Thursday. I think they enjoy, enjoy the food afterwards. I think so, too. <laughs> I think the staff enjoys the food afterwards as well. And then on um, Thursday, um, is that the 25th of September? I apologize. I, uh, I left off some, thank you, the 27th um, at uh, 6 o'clock, the genealogy group will be meeting as well. And that will be a presentation on the Mass Central um, Railroad with a sidebar on the making of the Wachusett Reservoir. Um, there's a local Berlin resident who's presenting on that. He's been studying it for like 20 years. There's no registration. I mean, we encourage registration so we don't have any handouts, but it's not critical. So if you're so inclined and you'd like to attend, 
um, please do come. It's walk-in. It should be held in the Fells Community Room. So, so that's September, and then um, coming up in October on the 5th, um, these are just some highlights. We, we have a whole host of ongoing programs that we're still running, but too many to list here for this evening. Um, they are all listed on our uh, library online library calendar on our website, which is crawfordlibrary.org. And all you do is click on the calendar, and you can see all of our programs and events. So these are just a, this is just a snapshot of the, the highlights. So I have, a, I have a question about that. The Friday, October fifth, is that um, a half a day for kids in school? Yes, I it's a half a day. It in, is. In the I'm not positive. Um, it's the Friday before closing. Yes, so it is. It, it is. Yes. Yeah, the half day. Yeah. What's up? Really? Yeah, a lot of times those holiday oh, weekends good. they'll give them extra time off for our teachers. Wow, I missed so, that. <laughs> yeah, they get a lot of extra time now. Um, yeah, so we I don't think we would have scheduled it for that yeah, time. Yeah, I know. It's an odd thing. That's why I was asking. I'm like, mm. oh, yeah. to schedule from 1 to 2. I'm like, oh, I hope it is a half a day. Yeah, normally we will look at the school calendar. We've got it printed out and yep. schedule things like that. Oh, um, for the half days so the kids have something to do. Yep. Um, I'm not even sure they may have the whole day off for all I know. Um, now that I'm thinking about it. Is that, that's not closed day weekend. Yes, it is. Oh. Yeah. Monday okay. celebration so, of the holidays. Um, <coughs> so, uh, so we have the Wingmasters OWL program. There's no registration. Yep. Um, it's, it's really intended for those ages six plus. Yep. Um, so come on down is and that enjoy. About owls? An owl? like there will be owls ones, there. Right? Yes. Really? Yeah. Oh, I want to go to that. Well, come on. <laughs> I love owls. That's why I asked. I know. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. On Thursday, October 11th, um, we have Meredith Charles returning for her teen improv class. Uh, we do encourage <coughs> registration, but we welcome walk-ins as well. She loves doing this and she's great at it. And we, we started this during the summer reading program and had a really great response. So we're hoping, um, we're reaching out to the schools as well to you know try and get the kids in the drama clubs interested mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, Thursday through Saturday um, is our uh, Fall Friends of the Library book sale. Uh, Thursday evening from 5 to 8 is for members only. Um, Friday <coughs> the 12th is from 10 to 5, so normal business hours, and that's open to the public. And Saturday the 13th is from 10 to 2, so normal, you know, all, all, all the time that the library is open. Um, and those two days uh, are for members, non-members, dealers. Um, the only one that's restricted is the Thursday evening and that's for members only. And you can join the day of, the evening of, if you're so inclined. Um, and I encourage people to come by. There are loads of books for all ages in great condition. Um, they make great Christmas gifts. And um, as I said, the Friends, of the, this is a, a major um, fundraiser for the library, and the Friends do support our programs. They uh, supply funding for our museum passes. <coughs> they fund our book page <coughs> subscription. They fund many programs as well, like chair yoga, and uh, um, almost all of the genealogy programs. So we rely heavily upon their, their s support. And so I encourage people to come on down and grab a few great reads mm -hmm. for cheap. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And um, let's see, on Thursday, October 18th, we have Pearl Jam concert number four. That's at 6 o'clock, Grey Whisker Pickers. On Saturday, October 20th, uh, Jerry Craft returns to do his cartoon drawing workshop. And that is registration, so you must call the library and register for that because the last time we had Jerry, I think it was a couple of years ago, and the room was full, so we did fill up pretty quickly, and he is fantastic. He's a nationally syndicated cartoonist. He is the, um, the author of Mama's Boys, and he just, I sat in on one of his workshops, and he's fantastic. The kids love him. He's a huge library advocate. He brings all of his books that are, you know, out in publication, at least a dozen of them. And it's all ages. We had people from five years old 
to 95 years old, and he is just fantastic. Anyone interested in um, cartoon drawing or anime, please come and register for this program. It's not to be missed, really. On Thursday, October 25th, um, we have our, I'm sorry, Jerry Craft is on Saturday, October 10th from 11 to 12. October 20th. <coughs> October. I think it's October 20th, the 10th. It is. What did I say? The 10th? I'm losing it. <laughs> Which would imply that I had it to begin with. <laughs> but anyway, um, October 20th. Um, Thursday, October 25th, our, our genealogy group is hosting um, two women in the, who are members of the um, Daughters of the American Revolution, mm -hmm. Anne-Marie Safai and Aline Healy, who is her mom. And they have been doing a um, um, Revolutionary War Cemetery Marker Project, and they're gonna talk about that. Um, again, we, we hope people register so we know how many handouts to make, but it certainly is not required. Anyone interested in history would enjoy this program. On Thursday, October 25th also, um, is our first annual, right Michelle? Right, Dudley spooktac Spooktacular event. Um, I have a little rundown, although I don't know if the flyers have gone out yet, but I have a sneak peek at what will happen if this is still <laughs> good. I'm going by the very last update that I got. So um, it's going to be Thursday, October 25th from 5 to 7 p.m., correct? <coughs> Just jump in <coughs> if, I'm, if I'm wrong about anything. Um, it's called the D Town of Dudley's First Annual Spooktacular. There will be a parade that begins at the library at 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. and it will proceed up Brandon Road and through Love, and through Love Court, which mm -hmm. is the little um, side road, mm -hmm. and into the parking lot in the back of Town Hall. Inside of Town Hall, we'll have hot dogs, cider, water, other treats, and of course candy, Halloween candy. And we will also, the, the library is sponsoring <coughs> Dr. Um, Jungle Stein's Halloween Spooktacular Madness show. We have uh, flyers that are going up in the library. Um, he is, uh, so he'll be here in the library at 6.30 is my- In the library or here, here at the yeah. town hall? I'm sorry, he'll be here in the town hall at 6.30. <coughs> okay. <laughs> it's one of those days, I'm telling you. <laughs> Can we go out and come in again? Mm -hmm. um, yes, so there will be more information forthcoming on this. Okay. I'm assuming that the Board of Selectmen will be talking about it and we'll be publicizing a little bit more and it'll be going into the newspaper. It will certainly be going up on our website and on our Facebook page and out in our October newsletter. Mm -hmm. So. We're, we're going to push it, and the town's going to push it. So it sounds nice. like fun. I hope it's a great success. Yeah, Something for the kids in the Absolutely. town to do. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that's going to be on Thursday, October 25th. Perfect. I guess, too. yes. Because I, I guess the um, they, they did not want to do it on Halloween itself. So, um, okay. So mm. that is the spooktacular. And then on Wednesday, October 31st, <coughs> Uh, from 10 to 4.30, uh, Ms. Ms. Pam will be hosting, doing drop-in Halloween crafts at the library. <laughs> and, you know, there may be candy involved. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> we have a lot of sugar out there, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> so I have a lot of what is other things. Sure in the town? 31st. It is on the 31st. Is that trick or treating the 31st? 5 to 7. And that's a Wednesday for us. We close at five, so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. next year though. Um, so that was program. Those are programs and events. Any questions about those? Again, I, I encourage people to check our website for a complete listing for story times and Pokemon mm -hmm. and things like that. Our our ongoing events. Um, Let's see, uh, why don't we flip over and do the budget next? Um, and so this is where we stand right now. So we're right about where we usually are about uh, this time of year. 
around uh, 76 ish percent we what happens is we uh, pay a lot of yearly contracts up you know in the July time frame and that knocks it down really quickly and then it'll kind of even so it's but from year to year this is pretty pretty average so if no one has any questions about that I'm going to move on to our miscellaneous and facilities on the other side um, I'd like to just mention that we are closed Saturday the 6th and Monday, October 8th for Columbus Day weekend. Typical holiday weekends, the, the like the lesser known holiday, or not, I shouldn't say lesser known, but Columbus Day, we did, when we reopened on Saturdays, we decided Columbus <coughs> Day and Memorial <coughs> Day that we were gonna close because those are big going away weekends and since we have such a small staff, um, we, we did that. So um, let's see, so I have completed the two state reports that were required um, that determine our state aid. The first one is called the ARIS report and it's mostly circulation, it's a lot of statistics, circulation through the, through the door traffic, collection, um, interlibrary loan, uh, things of that nature, more non-financial type stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, staffing things of that nature and then the second report uh, which is due you know right around the beginning of October normally I had it done earlier but I've been tied up with some other things um, that one I did finish it and submitted it Richard signed it it's been mailed and I've gotten a confirmation from MBLC that they've received it so what happens now is MBLC meets and they look at everybody's um, in their November, October, November meetings. And then they crunch all the numbers and they come up with your state aid award and you're notified of it in the November time frame. And they do them in waves. So the earlier you get it done, the sooner you get notified. Yep. That's why I always try to get it done as early as possible. Um, so I'm not sure what wave we'll be in, but, but certainly, we receive an award, um, I want to say late November, and then the, another one at, in April? April. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they, are, they split them up, and it, um, the reason they do that is because a lot of it is tied to the state budget. So uh, one of the line items that is voted on is state aid, <coughs> so if th that gets monkeyed with, then so do, it trickles down to the libraries. Mm -hmm. If I can add as a point of information for our new trustees, um, if I recall correctly, both last year's and this year's ARIS reports copies are in our trustee folder. They are. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah it's actually look. good information to take a look to see yeah. the increases in all the numbers over the course of a year. Yeah. Um, it's interesting information, <coughs> kind of gives you an overview of uh, the number of people using our library, all the materials that are going out, and um, it's just a something worthy of, uh, of looking at. You're staying with that thought. In the past, some of the reporting that you've been able to provide us with has shown the numbers of folks that have been in yep. the library on a monthly basis. Yep. I wonder, for again, for some of the newer members, if you might be able to mm -hmm. bring some of that information perhaps next month? I sure can. Because the numbers are amazing <coughs> in terms of the, the, the number of patrons who are in and out of the building on a monthly basis. And, I know uh, you just look at the numbers that attend the programs. And right. It's just yeah. a that alone is mm -hmm. great. I mean, uh, looking at that first one, the summer reading program, what, at 500 or so? Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the population of Dudley? I mean, <laughs> I mean, more than 500. More than 500, more than 500 <laughs> but my, I, I would suspect that we probably had our Shanghai a few from the neighboring communities in order to get it that high. And, it's definitely true. Right. Um, so it'll be interesting over the next year or so to see how the opening of the new Webster Library right yeah. well the library is well positioned in terms of geography not that far from Connecticut obviously and oh yeah Boston's we get just a lot a hop skip mm -hmm. and a jump up the road so we're exactly. kind of a, a hub if you will in terms of the it's, library it's very true we have patrons from many different communities mm -hmm. so and we welcome them all mm -hmm. we don't charge them any extra and um, we welcome everyone even those over the state line so um, sure I can do that I do that every now and then, maybe once a quarter, or once you know, once every four months or so. I try to show you guys, you know, a, a couple of, not everything, because it would take all night, 
but um, you know the important stuff like the through the, the people counter through the door mm -hmm. numbers um, you know program attendance uh, computer use wireless mm -hmm. use things like that that's always interesting to watch you know audiobook use downloadable <coughs> audiobook use because those are things we pay extra mm -hmm. for so okay. sure thing thank you Um, let's see, the website update, which I, I feel like I started 17 years ago. <laughs> um, it's about, the design is about 90% complete. Uh, we use a company called Piper Webs up in New Hampshire, and they do a lot of library websites. And uh, they do a great job. And so I've been working with the, the owner of the company, going back and forth, and the, the design is just about there. You know, obviously it takes a lot of concentration to do that kind of stuff, and if I get derailed on something else, then I have to put it aside for a little while and then remember where I was and go back to it. So <laughs> I'm really hoping that we will be going live in early to mid-October, depending on what Dale's, you know, workload is. But we're, you know, we'll be loading content in, and then, you know, we'll o only load in what we have right now and then, um, and then be working on new content because there's some new pages for adult programs and things like that. So, um, but to go live, I don't feel like I need to do that. I really just want to get over what I'm, what I've, you know, what's relevant. Um, <coughs> any questions on the website? I may see about a different online calendar, as Joyce pointed out, the one we have. Uh, <clears throat> the print function won't print out the times, and other people have pointed that out to me. Oh. Um, and so there is one called Event Keeper, which has online registration that you oh. can. Yeah, That'd we nice. we really need to get ourselves into the yeah. first yeah. century. Yeah. That would be really nice. <laughs> yeah. It would. And so that's you know that's something that would be an extra an added thing, but I think it's well worth it I'm because patrons have been asking for it, yeah. and it's it's. What we have right now is a little bit clunky, so we'll be, I'll be looking at that as well. And that will be, you know, probably the, the website itself will get rolled out and then I'll turn my attention to that because it's, it's not as, it's, it's really not that uh, big of a deal to switch from one to the other. And Piper Webs deals with the, the, the new one all the time because almost every other library is using it. It's called, um, not Event Keeper. Yeah, Event Keeper. Thank you. Um, so, just make a quick note here. Um, I I have <coughs> spoken about this in the past, um, and um, I'm revisiting the uh, the subject now because um, our fall warrant is open, and um, I am you know as you know we've been kind of you know, we chit chat back and forth about, you know, if we had our druthers, what would be the next position that we would add? And I had always thought that I would want someone for uh, helping with adult programming and things of that nature. But after thinking about it a great deal and um, sitting down with Ms. Pam, I really think that uh, we should focus the effort in the youth services area. And the reason I think that is because I would like to have Ms. Pam doing a lot more outreach with the schools and with other organizations that serve our younger population mm -hmm. um, from birth through uh, 18. So all the way through, that, that was, those are the ages that encompass our youth services. And it's just, it's too much for one person. You know, I can't have her be both in the kids' room and visiting the schools at the same time. Uh, it's a fairly common position that libraries have to have an assistant. So I'm bringing it up now only to get your approval to pursue it. Um, I am still, uh, we're still in the beginning stages of this. Um, I need to find out what the process is. Um, so this does not mean that we are definitely going to, you know, go for it. I just would like your permission to move forward with it. So what will that position entail? Sure. Um, so I have a draft 
um, I will email the draft to you because it is a draft and so we can revisit the draft but if I am to you know propose it I would need to do so probably before the our next meeting so um, but the description itself doesn't necessarily need to be finalized by that time it needs to be at least you know pretty firm um, and it would be um, so the principal responsibilities if that's what you're asking well I mean how many hours are you looking a week right now I'm looking at 30 hours a week so it would be considered a benefited full-time position anything over 20 hours mm -hmm. in Dunley is considered full-time yeah. um, or benefited I should say um, I did a survey of the uh, assistant youth services assistants um, from my colleagues and it came out to be roughly 18 bucks an hour in that range mm -hmm. so at 30 hours a week it would equate to 28,000 and change a year 28 188 extra a year in our budget so I would have to ask for that right but that's not including benefits that's just paying. we don't pay benefits out of our budget and that is position that is in place in local libraries yes. in, this, in this area yes mm -hmm. and I encourage you to you know look at other libraries websites and call them visit them if you are how many did you going. inquire with um, you, um, we I have, have like a group you meet with like sure something. right exactly so we've got Sturbridge Stockbridge South not Stockbridge Sturbridge Southbridge mm -hmm. Charlton Webster um, Oxford I don't know if Webster has one. I think they do. Uh, Oxford. Um, and they all have one? Yeah. Yeah, it's fairly common because you need someone to, you know, man the trenches <coughs> and, you know, do things when you're sending the librarian off to do outreach or run a program. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a stretch for us, and it always has been. Yep. This has been a perennial, you know, issue where we, you know, if the youth services um, librarian is in doing her story time or yeah. um, running a program, then no one's helping the patrons that are in there who are in need of materials or, you know, manning the circulation desk. We have yeah. two separate circulation desks, so, yeah. and we have a big children's area, yeah. and we also have the teen area, which um, years ago we expanded the children's librarian position to um, include teens mm -hmm. um, so we when we did that I think we were kind of testing the waters and like in the back of my mind I always thought that I would need to go for this in order to cover both of those groups mm -hmm. in fact many of the libraries um, in the area have teen librarians part-time teen librarians and but I think you know we so be how did you come up with the 30 hours um well I didn't necessarily I just sat down yeah. with Pam and we kind of fleshed out like okay you know um, we would like someone to be there you know five hours I mean five days a week and then we just said six hours seems like a good amount of time mm -hmm. for um, you know covering the desk yep. while she's doing programming because that's about half the day yep. and then helping with collection maintenance and we'd like to expand the programs mm -hmm. yep. so um, so it would be it would be during the busy times and then we we would <coughs> we want someone to be able to cover the other evening when um, Pam's not there you know what I mean um, and then some Saturdays so when we when we kind of fleshed it all out we came out with that number knowing that we might need to negotiate and how do you handle the Saturdays now right now the Saturdays are um, we have uh, Susan was hired <coughs> you know that position was yeah. hired specifically for Saturdays and then we rotate through so this position would be in that rotation okay. so the only thing um, so I'm just asking for your approval to pursue to move forward with this um, I'm not sure where it's going to go from here mm -hmm. uh, because I'm still learning the process myself mm -hmm. um, but I do know that I need your okay before mm -hmm. I go anywhere with this 
we need that in the form of a motion to move forward with that then? <coughs> okay. I don't think you need to vote on this. I didn't think so. Um, but I did not want to, you know, not have. So you're looking for a sense of the committee? Is that? that yes, I am. I'm looking for some consensus. Well, I just feel I haven't had enough time to really. Right. Like, and now yeah. all of a sudden we've got to do this before our next meeting. So to me, I don't know, I just feel a little rushed without, I'm not going to have time to really research and you want an answer kind of before the next time we meet. So I'm not, I'm not well, feeling positive I, about Right. I, I, I think what yet. Karen's asking for is our agreement that she <coughs> continue with the process, the process as opposed to finalizing it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I would say that's fine if we're not finalizing anything. I this I don't I would not I'm not asking for a commitment. Yeah. I'm asking for permission to pursue pursue it. Um, and what I plan to do from here is um, is is sit with the town administrator right. to see if it's even feasible. So we need to flesh this thing out a exactly. little bit. Exactly. And as you said, you have a draft that you're going to refer to us. Yes. You know, so what so do you need then before our next meeting? I I just want your permission to move forward on it, on, you know, talking to Greg about it oh, 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 and okay. sitting with the personnel board. Okay. And so you haven't spoke with them at all about this? I have spoken mm -hmm. with them briefly because I had to find out, you know, what to do first. And mm -hmm. they said, well, you need to have you know the blessing of your of your board. It, it sounds like this is very, very preliminary stage. It's very preliminary. So uh, we're, nothing's cast in stone, and we're yeah. not making any commitments at this point. Correct. We're just yeah. So I'm not making any commitments. So I don't have any problem okay. with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. I I just you know I wanted to, you know, we've been working on, we've been talking about adding a position. We weren't quite sure what mm -hmm. position, um, and this goes back to before. Um, we had new members on the board um, and you know I've been talking to the board for a couple of years now about the need for some help with programming and things of that nature and you know there still is a I feel like there still is a need for that um, but if I were to prioritize I would say this is probably more important and where you know if we're gonna focus an effort somewhere mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that the younger the younger um, crowd is yep. where it should be anyone any other questions get Harrison concerns questions uh, Karen, no? I, I uh, just trust your uh, understanding of the needs of our library so I, I would uh, certainly get uh, my permission to uh, I go agree. Again, this is the start of the process. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, as the process evolves, we'll be involved in terms of the next step. And, and, it, and you know, I, I don't think that it requires a vote if and when we come to that point, but, you know, for sure we'll no. be revisiting this. Okay. And I'm sure there will be more opportunities for us to raise questions. As yes, as definitely. As In the meantime, I, I mean, I just finished the draft, you know, putting some finishing touches mm -hmm. on the draft. Um, it's uh, very similar. We've been collecting position descriptions, and you know, I just kind of put them in a file for someday, and uh, you know, in the hopes that you know we'll be able to expand uh, mm -hmm. that department. So um, I will email that out to you guys and keep you uh, posted on anything that that comes up. Thank you. Um, the next thing that I wanted to, um, we, we, as you know, we have, um, a, there's a by, in the bylaws, our bylaws, or your bylaws, I should say, require four signatures for, um, invoice, payment of invoices, and that was to adhere to a Mass General Law, I believe, which got amended about a year and a half ago, um, allowing the board to appoint a signature authority and um, I would like to ask for um, the board to uh, appoint a person with a backup to sign the invoices rather than the four signatures. I emailed um, Richard the um, information, um, it was quite a while ago, 
in one of my department, my uh, director's meetings, um, I kind of asked for a show of hands, and they had all uh, gone over to the new Mass General mm -hmm. Law. It's the Municipal Modernization Act, I think is the name of it. But um, KP Law, who represents the town, did a nice summary of it. And I'll just, um, I'll read you the, uh, the, the section entitled Bills or Warrants for Payment. Um, this was what the amendment is. Allows municipal, I'm sorry, allows multiple member bodies, including boards of selectmen, to delegate to a single member authority to review and approve bills and warrants for payment and further requires such member to make available at the next meeting a record of all action taken. The Division of Local Services has indicated that it is also possible to designate a backup for this purpose. A board's vote to make such a designation may take a form similar to the following. And they give you some verbiage for, um, for doing this. You mean the, the wording is to, as far as how the motion would read? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it says, I move that name of board member, and if he or she is unavailable or unable, name of the backup member, to be designated to approve all bills, drafts, orders, and payrolls not otherwise presented for approval at a posted meeting to the full board, provided, however, that if such bills, drafts, orders, and payrolls are approved by name of board member or name of backup, each shall make available to the board at the first meeting following such action a record of such actions and further to ask the name of the board chair or staff person to include on the notice for each meeting of the board an item for such purposes. <coughs> so basically what my colleagues boards have done and I um, also sent along a copy of what Charlton sent out, you know, did for their, you know, their signature authority, and also Belchertown emailed me their warrant authorization. But, um, you know, essentially, um, Char Charlton authorized their director to sign all library warrants and payroll submissions without a signature from the trustees. Authorization is enforced until rescinded by the trustees or by the <coughs> appointment of a new library director. So it's not you know, it doesn't transfer over mm -hmm. if the library director leaves. Belcher Towns is a little bit more um, involved, um, but what they generally, what the library directors generally do is, you guys know that there's a cover sheet, and I would just um, make that cover sheet a part of my director's report to show what's been paid, um, but it would just be monthly. So I think it would make it easier um, it's more up to date. It's easier for the board. It's easier for me. Yeah. It's more expeditious. Um, like you've entrusted me to run the library, um, so yeah. I'm 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 asking that either Richard be the person yeah. with a backup, or I be the person with Richard as the backup. If I may, uh, I have advocated, I think in the past, at least in conversations we've had in favor of keeping the system that we have currently, and for a couple of reasons. One is, uh, very simply, it gets us into the library on a somewhat regular basis, at least four of us anyway on a weekly basis. And with that involvement or that entrance into the building, you have an awareness of what's going on. I think one of the last bills that we signed was for wood chips. I mean, yeah. generally people would not think of that as being something that's involved in a library or a part of the, what the expenses that a library incurs. So I think it gives you a level of awareness that we would be losing to some extent. Uh, I know it's an inconvenience. As some of you obviously are working during the day, that's not a situation that I have to deal with. Well, not formally, anyway. And uh, that is a struggle in terms of getting signatures from time to time. We did have, we do have something of an email chain that we try to use to keep people informed as to when we're short one or two or where we are in the process. I know that doesn't always work to everyone's advantage. Uh, fortunately, we are open on Saturdays, at least part of the year. So for those who might be working during the week, there's that little extra time that is available now. Uh, I think Karen gives us 
more than enough notice. Like she's very good about getting yeah. them to us on third. Like by Thursday night, you know, it's ready or whatever if it's available, and you have Thursday, right. Friday, Saturday, Monday to go in and sign. Well, that's my two cents, so to speak, and maybe a couple of pennies additional. Well, uh, one of the things that <coughs> this would do as well would be, um, you know, naturally, I have to allow for those days. And so the invoices actually come up to town hall on Tuesday evening. Mm -hmm. And so I still get invoices in. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, you know what I mean? And we wait a whole nother week before if an invoice comes in, I think it would be much more expeditious. And I think, I think that, um, you know, waiting a week. It's I think the whole purpose of doing major. that was to um, to show you what's being paid. <coughs> it's not the purpose was not to get people into the library. Not that that's no, not important. No, Richard. not necessarily. But I think as a side benefit, it does. You know, being uh, on, on site on location at least I mean, occasionally is is probably not a bad idea. Well, I, I wouldn't have known about the car accident. <laughs> well, <laughs> if I wasn't going into the library that day. Don't get the lift too. I was saying we got email too. <laughs> So anyway, um, you know, I feel pretty strongly about it. All right. Uh, if anyone care to make a motion with, with regards to changing the policy as it currently well, stands, I, I think Karen has the, the wording for the motion that would be it would it, just, um, it would require a change to the bylaws. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's another level. Exactly, and and there are other changes too uh, that I would recommend uh, after the two, but not not tonight. Um, but anyway, I, uh, I feel that before we can make any sort of more motion, we have to designate, first of all, discuss if that's something we want to pursue, which, you know, I believe it is. I mean, I, I, as Richard said, there are some of us who can get into the library, but it's, it's been kind of that fourth person is that nebulous yeah. that we look for each week. So I, um, I will say that it has been uh, more <coughs> difficult. Um, it has been more difficult um, over the last, I would say, six months. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so, who is that first person? person? Richard, do you want to make that commitment? Um, I, as I say, I generally am able to get in there on a mm -hmm. weekly basis. Um, there might be a couple of times during the year when I would be able to, and hopefully I give folks notice on that. But. I would not uh, have any problems, I don't think, being in there on at least a weekly basis and so on. Matter of fact, I used to get in the habit of going in on Thursday mornings, and that's usually before anything is ready, and I actually, <coughs> over time, had maintained that habit. You know, kind of a creature, well, not a creature of habit, certainly, but it just became part of my routine, just to go in on Thursday mornings. Uh, then I'd have to find myself back on Thursday <laughs> evenings or Fridays, but... Well, well what about if, if Karen signs it and then just them available for you to review when you're in. Uh, again, we have to change the bylaws. And as I, I recall, we have to do, the, we can't do that at this meeting, but we have to. Uh, we can't, right. 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 So, uh, yeah. I mean, on that. So, do we want to table this then? Yeah, put it on the agenda for next time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can, can we try to determine a first and second person? Well, I would have no problem being a person, a first, second, or whatever, <laughs> if, 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 if we decided to make that change. I think, it, I think what I was thinking was that, um, that we both, you know what I mean, the mm -hmm. director and, and I would say director, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. and trustee chair. Um, and. You know, I don't see why, you know, it couldn't be both, all of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. um, you know, you can, you can have any iteration on this mm -hmm. theme. I'm just thinking in terms of it being more expeditious mm -hmm. while still providing you guys with the information that you need to see what's being paid out of the library budget. So well, I don't think deciding who's first and second really matters because we can't do anything until the bylaws we do a change in the bylaws. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's we, just that a matter of, of what, making the recommendation. Yeah. Okay. What would be the level of detail that uh, you <coughs> think we would look, be looking at on a monthly basis? Would it be each and every one of those signature items? Or would it just be 
a collection in terms of, you know, under the categories, for example, miscellaneous or facilities. No, and, I, uh, I would just expenses. still continue to do that cover sheet because I think it's pretty good. It is. And right. why mess with it? And then I would just, so it would just be, you know, a monthly list of, you know, the invoices because we meet once a month. Right, so. right. And, and that, I, that could be a rather lengthy list, I suspect. In some weeks, there's a, a fair number of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it, it's no more work for me. It's no. just a matter of, mm -hmm. you know, making one page as opposed to four pages. Well, I think we want to put this on uh, agenda for <coughs> the next meeting then, yeah. for the consideration. Yeah. Does anyone have any final comments that well, they would like to make? What Karen just said, having uh, both uh, Karen and Richard as the signees per week. Mm -hmm. Putting something in the bylaws and putting people's names is usually not recommended. Right. It's no. usually the director and the chair. Positions. Right. And then um, as a backup, right. I would say, right now, sec well, we don't have one right now. That's going to be one of my recommendations going forward okay. um, for a bylaw change when we talk about it. Um, is uh, secretary right now. Okay. It, would be, it would be, you know, vice chair. There is one in name secretary. All right. So you've got you've got backup there if needed. Mm -hmm. If Richard's not available, or if Karen's not available, and and in all likelihood, there may be some time in the future where you know <coughs> one or someone's on vacation, mm -hmm. so it would be uh, okay. All right. Uh, so any further discussion on this? Harrison, you got any thoughts on this? No? I would encourage the trustees to visit and or chat with other library okay. boards and you know ask them questions see if you know if it's been you know traumatic for them <laughs> or <laughs> I mean I always encourage that anyway right, you know it's, right, always, right. it's always so good. this has been a long-standing practice in, in the other libraries <coughs> in the, the area since the law was changed since the law was changed yeah. so and then how far back does that go I think say? it's 2016 2016 oh, okay so it's all relatively new for everyone right 2016. Okay. So whatever their experience is, maybe we can set a reinventing the wheel. We can avail ourselves of uh, their thoughts and experience and see what their feelings might be feeling out a little bit. Right. I know they do it in Douglas because my friend is on the board there. Uh huh. They do what? Uh, the the uh, director signs and checks every week. Like, oh, okay. they don't have the floor. So they don't have the floor. Yeah. Okay. Or, or I don't know how many members they have, so I'm not sure whether four would be enough in that case. Okay. All right. I know one person does that. All right. And yeah, it's usually when I when I asked the group that was with me, and there were about eight people there or so, and it was they signed them themselves. <coughs> this is eight. <coughs> and there was a backup members. of a board member, so that's how they they handled that. Um, I, I'm perfectly amenable to a variation on that theme. I'm just proposing that we, you know, modernize with the, mm -hmm. with the act. Okay. I think it makes mm -hmm. sense. Anyone else? Comments? No? All right. So let's see if we can bring this up again at our next meeting and, uh, have some wording in place. Have some wording in place. Correct. Good thought. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I am going to ask um, because we um, we're in the midst of reviewing our patron behavior, unattended children, and YA room. We we don't actually have a YA room use policy. What we have is a behavior policy that's you know all encompassing. But um, uh, Pam and I are kind of looking at those policies right now. Uh, things have come up that where that have kind of you know made us think a little bit more about them. Maybe we need to be a little bit more specific about mm -hmm. them. And, um, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, and I, because of everything that's been going on, I don't wanna rush that either. So I, I would ask that I be allowed to present that um, maybe a mock up, mocked up version to you guys. I can email sure. for discussion at the meeting, certainly not, you know, before that. Mm -hmm. But just to give you something so that when we meet next time, we can, we have something to talk mm -hmm. about. <coughs> Thank you. Um, we, our, we are working on a shelter-in-place procedure. Um, 
kind of came up after the uh, the tornado that hit. We we don't have one currently, um, and we have a little bit of a you know uh, a difficult building for something like a shelter in place because it's all wide open. Mm -hmm. There's no room in the center of the building, which they always tell you to go to. Yeah. So I've been working with the fire chief on that. So I should have something for you again. I'll try and have you know a mocked up a draft in place uh, emailed out to you for the next meeting. Might be getting a bit ahead of this, but you mentioned the fire chief, and uh, I'm wondering, uh, in light of the two accidents we had recently, um, very fortunate in both cases that there were no injuries. I'm not too sure how much longer we can trust to walk on that. Uh, both vehicles, as I recall, came across the sidewalk uh, area where pedestrians would be accessing the library. And again, there was nobody there in both cases, fortunately, again. Uh, but it occurs to me, and I've talked to the town administrator, that uh, we would or should consider something of a barrier, something that would protect pedestrians accessing the building from God forbid a third occurrence, something like this. I think this. we should put up Jersey barriers. <laughs> uh, aesthetically, <laughs> I don't. I don't I think even we should think. look into what's available. Right. I, I think in future. mention made here of the right. fire yeah. chief. Yeah. I suspect <laughs> that he might be in town, a resource, right. uh, something. And the Jersey barriers. I don't even think the folks in New Jersey like them being called Jersey yeah. barriers. They're yeah. pretty yeah. Really unappealing. Uh, but he might have some thoughts. I, I was a little disappointed. I, I checked outside of this building the day I talked to the town administrator, and there's just this plastic chain there, this yellow thing, which, which wouldn't stop a uh, committed fly. Uh, I, mean, I guess it's ornamental, or it's intended to be. It has no real function. Uh, it actually does. It keeps people like me from falling off the curb and spraying in there. Oh, okay. Well, I wouldn't hold it too too tightly because I don't think it's going to last. The week before it happened to me, it happened to uh, one of our volunteers. Oh, okay. You know what, Richard? I thought I had that on here because I was thinking. Did you somewhere that I jumped it's ahead not on, No, no. It's, not, it's actually not on here. I must have been thinking. It might be in my notes for, you know, the, the insurance claim type right. thing. Um, I'm definitely thinking we need to investigate something. Even the insurance people, uh, if you have conversation with them, might have some thoughts in terms of what other clients have used or they've seen in use. Uh, one concern is that we have a lot of walk area in front of the building. Yeah, and one thing uh, that was proposed, I, I don't know if the chief mentioned this or it could have been the structural engineer, I'm not, I can't remember, but um, the you know the, the the posts that are in right. front of like Dunkin' Donuts and stuff. I guess that was you know in response to people driving through. Mm -hmm. right. um, it was the insurance person, as a matter of fact, and um, so that's on the list. Okay, good. And we'll have to see what. As you said, I think almost every week in the news it seems somebody's driven into a Dunkin' Donuts or a house or something. At, at least. I, I suspect it's a lot of distracted drivers who aren't really before fully they engaged their before or you know, or over caffeinated after they've had their coffee. Yeah, I'll definitely look into it and I'll get back to you guys with what I find out. Thank it you. might be, you know, a few meetings from now because that would kind of be right. the end, you know, of the whole <sighs> procedure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um the exterior doors were finished, um, and Ernie told me that the next refinish, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to need to be completely um, stripped because, you know, we've been kind of doing surface um, work on them, and um, moisture, you know, continues to get in. There's no kick plates on those front doors, um, you know, aesthetically there. I think that was why, because of the, we have an overhang there, right. but he said that moisture still gets in there, mm -hmm. and um, he said it. You know, it's not for another couple of years, but the next, he said he just wanted to give us a heads up that next time he really thinks that the doors need to be sanded all the way down mm -hmm. and completely. The option be to replace the doors? That's always an option. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the time comes, mm -hmm. I want to consider. I, I think I would get his opinion on, you know, how much, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, how much would that get us, right. you know, versus replacing the doors entirely and with perhaps maybe a different finish or I don't know. 
but we, you know, it's not going to come up for another couple of years. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that all of the doors have been done and are completed, and um, that's that. Um, the tree that was damaged during the tornado uh, has been removed, um, and the highway superintendent just suggested that we look into removing that tall pine that's now exposed. Um, it, it's unfortunately those pines tend to shed mm. from you know the ground up, and then they get top heavy, and mm -hmm. the, roots the, aren't that the roots great. aren't that great. And so I thought I would just get an estimate and kind of run it behind before you guys at one of the meetings. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the tree's not dead or anything, though, is it? The tree's it's not healthy. <laughs> Is it no? I mean, really, the one that fell was not healthy. The one that fell was, was rotten. absolutely rotted. Right, on the inside. right. Yeah. So, but you don't know that this one's rotted. I don't know that for sure. Oh, okay. I, I I didn't know. I can't tell from the ground. Um, it would I would have to we would have to have a tree person come out and yeah. have a look at it. Yeah. But I, you know, I figured I would just maybe get an estimate on that. I don't know if Danny's going to be having any other trees taken down because that was that was really good when we did it that way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll find out. We'll have a new <coughs> highway superintendent shortly too. Mm -hmm. so. um, okay, so now the fun stuff. Um, the insurance claim <coughs> from June. Uh, we were just talking about the light post and the bike rack damage. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, received the the claim money less the deductible. The bike rack was ordered, and Danny's crew came and installed it on Monday. No, last week, last mid last week, they came and installed it. Um, they did a great job, and they took the old one, and I think they're gonna uh, maybe use it at the beach or something like that. Um, well, I don't know. I'm an old Yankee, you know. Yeah, it is. I'd be used for everything. That's so good. that's good. Hey, you know. Um, a little silver lining. Well, you know. Um, and then the light post was ordered at the same time. Unfortunately, there's a you know six to eight week lead time on those things. It's not trivial. The electric the, co the electric um, company has to come. Mm -hmm. The electrical contractors that we you know I used the same ones that put those up. I I found the spec for the original. Um, mercifully, the sconce I think is reusable, and so oh. I saved it and I put it in the shed, and so. <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we may be going back to them with another, you know, but I thought, well, what the heck? You can't, you know, it's you never know. Try. It is worth a try. Um, so that's been all right. I was looking at the dates on that, and they quoted me six to eight weeks, and that's right around the beginning to mid-October, like around the 10th or mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. So I'll follow up. I have a note to follow up with them just to make sure that's on track. And then, of course, they'll have to come out and install it and do all of that stuff. So, and I did send an inquir inquiry to our insurance carrier about recouping the deductible. Yeah, that was my that was going to be my question. Well, why is there a deduct? Why are we less a deductible? We shouldn't be because we have a deductible. <coughs> but yeah, ho homeowners doesn't have like a waiver and deductible like auto does. Uh, so you automatically that's right. We have an insurance person yeah, here. Well, <laughs> excellent, excellent resource. That's a good answer. Well, Thank what, you. Wouldn't it be I mean, the, the person who's, who hit who us is, should who be covering? Well, you think. usually go through your own insurance because it's faster. Right. So uh, and the claim gets paid out faster, uh, but you do have to wait for your deductible. But you will eventually will get recouped. So we should be able to recoup. Our insurance yeah. company hands it over to their sub subrogation mm -hmm. people, yeah. and then they go after yeah. the, the car insurance company. Do I have that right, Stephanie? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. I've learned way more than I want to know about <laughs> insurance lately. <laughs> Very good job. Thank you. Um, number two. Do you have any job openings? No, I'm just <laughs> um, Insurance claim number two, um, which we all know is the corner of the library, um, sustained um, pretty extensive damage on August 30th. Um, the contractor, um, we, we've had, just to bring you up to date, 
I commandeered um, Ben to help me, you know, kind of. <coughs> yeah, that was my question. How yeah. did Ben get involved in this? Ben, ben was on he has, board. He has the, historical knowledge. Of yes, he yeah. was uh, there when that first shovel was moved. No, I believe that. Right I just didn't. For this process, I was just kind of like. Yeah. But, uh, well, here was, my, here was my thinking, Joyce. Um, was he the one that the other trustee? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. The one and the same. Yeah. The other one. Well, that was um, so oh, here's, here was my rationale for you. Um, I didn't just pluck that out of thin air. I would have normally, you know, worked with Richard to just sort of, you know, yeah. navigate the waters and Greg, of course. Um, but Richard has been otherwise occupied, and I asked permission to seek the assistance of Ben, who has all of this historical knowledge. Mm -hmm. And as Richard pointed out, has been there since the very beginning. So yep. I thought, you know. Um, and he he was very amenable to helping, and I said okay. Um, so you reeled him back. I would in. just like to see you use the board versus anything because we're you know that's what we're here for. Ben has a lot is of to help you. But the history and knowledge well, of a building being built, like I don't know that that we we had available a unique <coughs> resource, which I have to say that none of us on the board I think is qualified. To in the same way that Ben was in terms of the planning of the building, the structure of the building, the building of the building, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an opportunity to avail ourselves of that resource, and I think that was a reasonable step to take. And, and also, yeah. just a, a, a note that I, I really did not have to have anybody else help me. I mean, I, I no, would have, yeah. when I when we sustained massive snow damage, I um, I spoke to the contractors, I got the estimates, I selected the contractor, I handled mm -hmm. the entire thing myself. It's just, at times, so it's, it's, it's... This was a little bit more, and I thought, you know... <coughs> uh, say, having your second set of eyes is uh, can be a benefit. Right, and not just that, just like, who did we use for, you know, for mm -hmm. that? Who did we use for that? You know, I do have the notebooks in my office, but, you know, they're... Yes. Yeah, but you get estimates for repair. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so we're we're kind of um, <coughs> we the where we are right now, and Greg has been participating in this as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have spoken to three different companies, mm -hmm. um, and we've kind of narrowed it down to one. But we're meeting again with them tomorrow, so I'll have more information on you, with for you, um, and I'll. My plan is to just keep you guys, I've been giving you updates on things, mm -hmm. um, and my plan is to continue to do that. This, so. this isn't anything that was ever planned for, I mean, especially no, I a just second occurrence. It, I mean, this is, uh, we, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that <coughs> went in here, uh, and I'm sure that the day of the events, uh, the adrenaline was running at, at full force, in everybody's case, you know, trying to figure out what was going on. on that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, I, from what somebody, I think this was, was sounds like an earthquake or something at the time. I mean, the the yeah. initial impact must have uh, <coughs> scared the bejesus out of folks, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was five minutes before story time, thank God. Well, that before we open. Right. I mean, yeah. again, we've been very fortunate in this, and we've been feeling our way through this, and I think uh, Karen has reached out to the resources that have been available and rightfully so in terms of getting this process nailed down. And it uh, looks like it's moving forward. Again, hopefully it will never happen again. Um, and we'll just have to uh, finish the repairs as required. Anyone else? Any comments? There's, on that? And there, there's more than just the building too. There's shelving and things like that. Right. So um, that was pretty easy because I'm always in touch with our shelving contractor, yeah. and um, you know, so I've dealt with them before. You know, just to do additional shelving mm -hmm. and lighting and things like that. So they're they're just right at my fingertips, and that was so they've been wonderful, and um, so. Um, and again, we'll be doing the same thing because it's per incident, the deductible. <laughs> <coughs> what happens is the insurance company, you know, they go back and forth with, you know, the, the money part of it, mm -hmm. and then um, oh, money gets sent to us, it goes into an insurance recovery account, and then we're allowed to pay bills out of that account. You've already seen one of them for the bike rack, I think me referencing insurance recovery. Mm -hmm. So you'll see more of that as, as we go along with this procedure, I mean with this process. 
So um, I'm really hoping that we will be a complete building and grounds again by, I mean, I might be pessimistic here, but I'm hoping by the end of November. I think that that's a that's pessimistic, you know, mm -hmm. according to what I've been told by end of November for what? I'm sorry. For having mm -hmm. everything completed. Mm -hmm. All the repairs. Really? By the end of November? Mm -hmm. Wow. I hope so, Joyce. That's really optimistic. I like I, that. I was optimistic <laughs> too. Very optimistic. <laughs> Good luck with that. Okay. We'll revisit that one. <laughs> well, I'm just going I'm just going by discussions that we've had with the contractors. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see what happens going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, I can, once, <clears throat> I mean, it's just been a lot of, you know, paperwork and things like that. And um, and so once... Out of the three companies, like, what is their time frame of when they can actually start this job? Yeah, I, I believe, you know, most of them said, in, you know, a couple weeks after the, after the contract or the proposal is signed. So I can't really give you a specific no, time. No, but that's because, what they said, like yeah, several weeks after the yeah, contract. Yeah, a couple of weeks signed. afterwards. Just, yeah. you know, they need time to line up crews mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. <clears throat> right, exactly. Um, let's see. In other news, uh, one of our, one of our self-checks, it's been on the fritz for months. And, you know, I've been in denial about it. But um, <laughs> it's it finally kicked the bucket, um, the hard drive went on it, and it's, you know, again, it, it was part of the initial computer install in the library, so um, I did talk to 3M, and they they don't even want to, like, they said it would be cost prohibitive to even come in and try to, you know, resuscitate it, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, and I had anticipated, as part of the co whole computer upgrade, right. that we would be doing those too. I just left them till the very end. So um, I am getting um, quotes from them on replacing those two self-check machines. It's more it's more cost efficient for us to do both at the same time. Um, so yes, I recall in the past when we looked at renewing a maintenance agreement with them, mm. the pricing was crazy. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say ridiculous, but that's pretty close to it. So right? now what happens is we start over with a new you know, um, warranty period. So it actually, I mean, it works to our benefit, really. Okay. It's still going to be expensive, yeah. but but I will say that you know when when the library decided to do RFID, um, they did so knowing that it's it's expensive. Right. Right. I, I guess I think we had a little sticker shock though when we got that last quote because 3M had become biblioteca and. Uh, they yeah. seemed, as I recall, your your conversation, uh, your your remarks with regards to your conversation with them were that they didn't seem very cooperative or very <laughs> flexible or a few other things that they weren't. And uh, I, I just maybe again they're more amenable when in terms of new equipment and starting over again. Kind of we'll I see. Mean, there's other RFID options, but the problem with that is the other the other workstations that are not self check would also have to be upgraded. upgraded. And I don't need those upgraded right now. They're working great, mm -hmm. knock on wood. So, you know, I don't want to do that. And I, I'm not even sure if that would require us to change our stickers right. or what. That would be a I major mean, undertaking. Yeah, I think it would just, you know, if we just, I think we should just stick with them and go forward. Well, let's hope for the best. And you know, I was just, I, I <coughs> again, my director's list serves and things like that, they're, they're invaluable for asking these kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. And I, just out of curiosity, I asked the question, you know, who, who else out there in CW Mars land uses RFID? And I was surprised that, like, there's a lot of other libraries that are going over to RFID now. Mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I didn't think it had picked up as much steam, but I guess I was wrong about that. So um, it's still not the majority. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that libraries are going over to that because of the whole self-check thing. Right. 
you know, it's it's just becoming the wave of the future. Is there it's any opportunity <coughs> with uh, CW Mars to work out some kind of a uh, package where more than you could link several libraries and, and make a larger purchase as a result and have negotiating uh, abilities that might uh, go along with that? Well, we already belong to the Mass Higher Education um, Consortium, right. and that they are we already get um, MPEC. Okay, discounts. So yeah, that's, discount that's that the purchasing cooperative. So okay. um, we already have taken advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So you'll, you know, when I present that, you know, when you guys see the bill, you'll see MHEC discount as being part of that. All right. So. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's a great, that's a great uh, advantage. Um, last but not least in my report, I want to say thank you to United Way and uh, Mafre. Uh, volunteers for coming to the library on Friday, September 14th and uh, for the United Way Day of Caring. Uh, they've done this every year since I've been there, um, so going on five years <coughs> now, or uh, five years. And they come with um, their tools and their gardening gloves and they clean up the library property, um, they spread mulch, they um, you know, they plant mums, they beautify the property, and we're always much obliged to them because, you know, we run lean and mean here in Dudley, and we don't, you know, we don't get to those things um, with, our, with our small staffs, and it just makes a huge difference to us. So our hat's off, everything looks great, and I would like to especially thank um, one of our most uh, valued volunteers, George Martin, for us, uh, you know, being the coordinator of the effort. He's done this um, along with Ben every year, and, you know, they just have it down pat. They know exactly, you know, what to do. And then we have a pizza lunch afterwards. So thank you very much. Oh. I'm done. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, and then, uh, well, let's see if we can move along then perhaps to old business. First item there is October meeting date. And that had to do with, it, unless you recall what it was about, um, I had, uh, uh, there are five Tuesdays in October, and somehow I counted uh, the fifth oh, Tuesday. Oh, yes, yeah. But it turned out well because Karen is here. Yeah, so. But I even have on here September 25th. Yeah, well, we changed, when we didn't do the August, August Oh, meeting. that's yeah. what that yeah. changed to. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. been updated. I thought I sent that out to so our meeting would be the 23rd of August, of October, rather? Is that right? No, it will, it's the 30th. The 30th. Karen's okay. going to be away, so All we're right. keeping it at the 30th, 30th of October. Yeah. I did notice, too, that the selectmen are due to have a meeting in the library, or meet in the library in December. Yeah. Uh, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. That should be interesting. Yeah. Where would that be? In the Fells room? Yes. Okay. I invited them to have a meeting there in December. Right. It'll, it'll, it'll be all gussied up. <laughs> Isn't it always? Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, October meeting date issue resolved then the 30th of. It's the 30th. New trustees orientation. We have a couple of trustees who are going to be going to orientations. Yep. I'm going in October, actually. I'm going to Chatham. Oh, good for you. Yeah, you're going to combine that with some vacation time. I certainly am. <laughs> I certainly am. Say hello to the okay. sharks while you're down there. Yes. yes. I didn't sign up for one yet. I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to go. Okay. So. It, it, I have done it. I, I'd like to actually do it again, and uh, I did find it worthwhile. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of things that uh, they bring up, uh, many of which it's, it's good to know about. If you wait long enough, we'll be holding one at the library. Yes. yes. Actually, yes. October 11th is the one that I'm going to, but the following week on the 18th is the open meeting, Lauren Spencer. Okay. I signed up for that. Yeah, and I signed up for that one as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. We have talked about having one in and <coughs> yeah. uh, I don't know that They're we They're not would. willing to commit as yet, I think. Right. They probably don't decide on dates right. until after the okay. first of the year, is what, what I'm guessing. Because or later on this year. So that, that's another item we want to keep on the, the table yeah. and, and revisit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think you covered the report updates, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Invoice signing protocol. Again, uh, I'll table that for the time being, and mm -hmm. I'm sure more discussion will follow. 
uh, the eight five year strategic plan. You did touch upon that. Did too. anybody um, do any of the webinars? I did a webinar um, from the library. Uh, Getting unstuck, help your board, staff, and town talk about library funding. I, I did it back in the middle of August. Yeah, I have the link to it, but I haven't had time to do it yet. Yeah, I did. It was in, you know interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think Karen brought it up um, maybe a month ago. Did you bring up the last meeting or the one before that? What did that? I bring up? Strategic planning. Oh, I um, well, I don't feel stuck <coughs> on it. I just you know I, I just no, no, no. Um, I'm just saying you brought up strategic planning. Yeah, that I was just, just the name of the. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. I brought it up in the context <coughs> of it's on the list of things to get to pretty soon, and I'm anticipating that I'll be getting to that in the November time frame, and that, yep. um, you know, would probably be, you know, throwing well, it out there for people who want to participate. In fairness, you've had some major distractions <laughs> of late. Yeah. Uh, it, it is on my it is on my list, though. <laughs> I, I do keep, a, you know, I, I have to keep those things in front of me because yep. they just slip and Because I know you slip. said you wanted to do a smaller one, and, and I get yeah. that and all that. So I, I did look through the, um, <clears throat> the long-range strategic plan that was done from 2013 to 2018. <laughs> so in your lovely hopes of, of presenting this in November, Karen, I hate to give you more jobs, but to benefit the whole board, what I'd like is, is it possible for you to look at this plan that was developed and answer some of the things that are in here, like what happened with it? Like there's lots of things, like I had questions, well, does this happen? Has it started? Like as I went through reading every one of them, what's the attendance? How many responded? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm looking for and I think would be helpful to the board is to know where does this stand? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, that would be the first thing that I would do, I think, yeah. um, is review that, is review the plan. Yeah. But I wouldn't be starting that until I get some of these other things, you know. Yeah, no, that's fine, but I'm just We're saying We're still that. talking about the five-year strategic plan, right? Correct. Okay, just want And to I think sure. I emailed it out to all of you. Um, oh. Yeah, you did. That's, I, that's, that's my copy. I, I, yeah, I, I, I didn't print it. it, but I got it. You got, got it. it, right? Um, so that was my whole thing. Uh, yeah. Was I, I know was it's coming. Oh yeah, it's a huge file. So I'm not sure that. Yeah, no, you, um, there were a lot of. Uh, there was a lot of backup material. Um, and as I say, it, it would have been a huge file. There was a, a PowerPoint presentation. They were. The no, uh, of that's the actually and that's actually I think at the library. At the library thing. Yeah, but okay. I'm saying for us to move forward, I'd like to know what happened with all the, mm -hmm. you know, the line items. Kind of like what happened with objective one, eight, one through right. eight, one through eight. Like um, where do we stand? That would be so the, that we know. That would be the first step. Yeah. In, but I think I think <clears throat> we would. Um, well, I haven't given it a, a huge amount of thought because, you know, I just haven't turned my attention to it yet. But um, as far as the process goes, I think that that would be, you know, once we, once we figure out who's going to work with me on this, um, I think that would be the first thing, you know, I would do is review <coughs> that and sit with the, you know, the rest of you or whoever else is working on it with me. And yep just kind of go through page by page yeah. um, and see, you know, and just talk about the old one and then kind of yeah. go forward from there. Well, that's what, that, that's what my goal was, was like before we started, I really would like to know the answers to where does that, where does it stand? Right. That's my thing. So I just realized it's a lot of work to process through that. So I didn't want to like throw that at you and say, oh yeah, next week, uh, I'd like to know the answers to this. No. I know that it's not going to happen while. next week anyway. It's going to take a little while for that to happen. Actually, we started doing that about a year. Yep, I do have about notes. Maybe. Yeah, we were going to do, um, we were trying to do an interim plan update. But, you know, again, it's just, there's just so much on the plate that 
you know, you can only divide yourself this, from these uh, places. As I look at it, this report is 17 pages, and uh, quite frankly, I do have some things that I've highlighted as well. Uh, yeah, a lot um, that's a pretty big bite to try and chew in one of our monthly meetings. Exactly. I don't know exactly how well, we I mean, might want to address this. Well, I mean, maybe she something and just give it just if, to If we wanted to there. somehow split it up or it's take it a thing. chunk at a time, as opposed to trying to take the whole thing at once. I do that. Um, I'm not sure what thing, you know, what chunk we go with first. I know you have some specifics. Maybe you could. Nothing specific. I looked through the whole plan. I just had okay. questions well, throughout that I was like, that. I don't I, know. I understood you to say you had some questions things. you wanted to raise. And I thought maybe no, we no, could no. perhaps put that was in the agenda or list a couple <laughs> of them anyway. I, I'm not, I, I can't see myself getting to it before the November meeting. Okay, um, that's fine. Um, that's fine. And even that would be a push with, you know, the building and yes. um, I need to finish these other projects that I've started. <clears throat> um, but I, um, I, I have no problem with going through it, mm -hmm. making notes about all of the, the goals that were set forth, yeah. you know, whether we did accomplish right. it, right. Um, if we didn't, why not? You know, just, yeah. it doesn't have to be a, an no. entire dissertation no, on it. No, not at all. Um, That's well, not what I'm I, I, I would, would just think like that if we you know, could, maybe doing. looking ahead, try to keep our agenda <coughs> on the light <coughs> side for November and try to make this the main focus or at least allow it sufficient I, time I to think, get into I that. I think if Karen's talking about her, pro her starting to In November, I'm sorry. November. Yeah. So, okay, so, so uh, beyond that. December, we normally have a, with a joint a meeting in January to cover December yeah. and January. That's probably a little awkward in terms of trying to combine the two. And then I can give it a, I can try, you know. It's well, I'm just, just thinking good with February meeting, perhaps? That too far out. Well, let's see. You know, we've got time. Let's see what Karen has to say about in November. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, we'll, we'll do that. And my concern is that there's a lot there, and uh, it could take a significant amount of time. Well, to I, one of the I, I was kind of thinking more along the lines of um, I mean, when it was first developed, it wasn't done as part of the normal no. board meetings. No, there was like all. a sub. A subcommittee, okay. and that's what I was were thinking. Not, not all trustees; there were just one yeah. or two trustees. Yeah. Right. So that's what I was thinking again was, and that's pretty common because I, I don't think it should be all, all board of trustees. I right. think it should be Community a couple members. of staff members. <coughs> oh yeah, friends. A group. Yeah. Um, maybe a you know like a I, that's but that's Marriage. something that you know again, that's part of the process that I would need to look into with the Mass Board of Library Commissioners, mm -hmm. like you know, steps leading up to. Um, but it doesn't preclude me from doing what you've asked. Mm -hmm. I just want answers to like, where do we stand? That's right. not, not a dissertation, just how oh, do no. we stand in that? Because I know you had said you'd like it to be smaller the next one, and I was like, it yep, must I be get smaller. that. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> I'm in agreement with that. But I would just would like, you know, I just read through it, and I was like, hmm, don't know where that stands. Hmm. Well, so I, I would invite know. you to, the next time you have that <coughs> response, maybe to make a note of that thing specifically, as, and we could maybe look at that at some point down the road when it's convenient and when we can have the time for it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Because uh, I, I think without something specific to consider, I just want to know where each goal lies, that's all. Just what? a brief where each goal lies. Was this? Okay. Reach, not reached, where does it stand? And like they, they have questions and I this no, no answer. And so. I suppose along with that is what is the plan going forward yeah. in terms of those goals? Are they still active? Yeah. Or, yeah. All right. Anyone any other discussion or questions with regards to the strategic plan? Mm -hmm. New business. Follow up storm slash access. I'm sorry, slash accident issues. I think we've pretty much addressed yeah. those, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Too, so just the hiring protocol. Right. Um, I had one, one additional thing. I wanted to know if there was any representatives going to the Webster Library opening to rep represent the Dudley Library. Yes. <laughs> I've already been. Oh, yeah, um, and nice. Uh, Very. I pleaded. They, they, they have an official official uh, September 29th. September 29th. Is it the 29th? I think it's the 29th. I knew it was the end of the month. Yeah. You got it early, huh? And Sneak peek. What? What day of the week is the 29th? I expect that Karen will get an invitation. <laughs> um, Monday, Tuesday. 
it is a 29th is a Saturday. Saturday. So I would say it's oh. a Saturday because ours for Dudley was because mm -hmm. my husband we all went from Dudley had theirs. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think it'd be great. Mm -hmm. Show our support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we get an invitation typically to those things? Or do we just show up? Just show up. Show up. Okay. Well, it was in the newspaper, so I'm yeah. assuming that, you know, and it probably will be in this this week's as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, they are open for business, so if anyone wanted to stop by in advance of the 29th, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to see us. We, um, we took the, all of their interlibrary loan deliveries while they were closed and moving, so, um, which I understand they did for us. Mm -hmm. So, Ooh. yeah, yeah. Exactly. helping out the neighbors. Yeah. It was not, it was really nothing. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty straightforward. So. Oh, thank you, Joyce, for bringing that up. And the last thing I wanted to ask was um, I just wanted more clarification and an explanation for what I read in the Times. You've been so good, Karen, about telling us and keeping us up to date about that. I kind of read that and I was a little like, oh! Which thing, Joyce? <laughs> <laughs> Personnel board, reinforcing hiring procedures. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, that was, I think it was taken a little out of context. You can speak with Peter Fox about it if you'd like. Um, he said he would come tonight, but he had a, a prior engagement. Um, he himself, you know, said that it was taken a bit, of, his comments were taken a bit out of context. And that's the thing is you can't believe what you read in the paper. So that's yeah. why I'm like, I just wanted an explanation. I had, so the, Fake news. Of I know. Why not? I didn't take umbrage with it at all because but what was it in regards to? Okay, um, well, we had um, hired people to replace, yeah. you know, existing positions. And I had asked, um, because back in, I want to say it was October time frame, um, the clerk for the personnel board retired. And then things just seemed to, you know, as Peter indicated, kind of, you know, go into a little bit of confusion, I would say. Um, and um, I had asked for, you know, the checklist of things that department heads need to do because ordinarily that's all handled by the clerk. And I didn't have anything. So um, apparently I missed the checklist item, you know, where they're supposed to get their physicals. And I think that's what the, you mm -hmm. know, the article, you know, pointed out or specifically pointed out. Yeah. So, um, you know, Peter, Peter uh, acknowledged that he said they're, you know, they're they're working. They're still working on this checklist. He's adamant that department heads have it. Um, so he wasn't. So he, do you have it? No, we haven't still finished don't it. Have yet. One. Correct. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you know, if we're ex if we're gonna if we're gonna hire, we need to have some direction on that. Mm -hmm. um, and he he knows that. Um, and he's, you know, he's pushing for that. No, yep. it's just things move slowly. So, um, you know, he, he's been. We've chatted on numerous occasions about it. We're yep. both on the same page. Um, like I said, it was. I think it was taken a little bit out of context. I didn't take it personally. So, how many people are they saying were working before they were supposed to be working? Um, well, I don't know town wide. No, um, in the library. Three. And they were all hired right around the same time. Okay. So, like, all in that span. Yep. Um, they were all hired within, you know, April, April 30th, and then yeah. in rapid succession, um, yeah. July 1 and July 2 and July 6th. And, you know, again, I had asked, I have asked repeatedly for a checklist of things that for department heads of things that you know should be done mm -hmm. and so far I have not received that so so who do you speak to in regards to that I've already spoken to him it's Peter Fox okay. the so chairman of the other board. departments have been affected by <coughs> this as well I mean they, are, they would be in the same situation Correct. with laps into the checklist though yeah I mean it's just you know they they do realize that it's um, you know an oversight that needs mm -hmm. to be rectified but, but it I sounds like it's a checklist that's like public, uh, hanging on a bulletin board. Well, it, 
That's it may not why necessarily I'm... be public, but at least be something that <clears throat> the, the department heads would have access to. Right, it, but right. Well, that's what they said having, in our in, in as much as it doesn't it exist, is. apparently, yeah. there's nothing for them to refer to. So folks are pretty much, I guess, left on their own. To try well, to not, the not just that, but when I asked, um, I believe that they said that they would like, they were going to review it and mm -hmm. update it. So um, whether or not something is hanging anywhere, it's not current and oh. needs to be updated. And mm -hmm. that's why mm -hmm. they haven't sent anything yet. Mm -hmm. I believe that the board is now, you know, working through that um, checklist. And I don't know where it stands right now. I spoke to Peter, I want to say, about a week ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're, we're in touch on a weekly basis. So it just. I don't know, it just sounds bad for the library. I, I didn't enjoy reading that article. No. And I just didn't know about it either, so I was just like, oh. Well, um, you know, you, sh you don't know about it because um, typically um, I believe the Stewart stories are done based on the videos and there's yeah. never usually follow up with Karen to find out information. That well, that one was, not with Peter. right, and that one was, that one was a, a meeting of the personnel board. Mm -hmm. and. Exactly. Um, you know, so it was another case of someone watching the video. And, mm. um, but if you have any concerns, Joyce, I would I would have no problem with you speaking with Peter. Oh um, no, that's, you know he. I and just I, wanted to know where it stood, and mm -hmm. did we find out about <coughs> this when we open the paper. Yes. Uh, yes. I was. Yeah. Like, I was like, ooh. Well, again, they're looking to get your attention, so I think that uh, yeah. get you we to look at the Webster right. Times is good for the Webster Times. Exactly. Don't worry, I thanked him for calling me out. <laughs> <laughs> and, Not you calling know, you out, I just wanted to know where you no, no, stood. And Peter. You've hired people probably prior to those people since you've been here. Yes, but there was a clerk mm -hmm. who did the all the of that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I needed to hear, that's all. Mm -hmm. Joel left and Joel the left and I didn't know. Oh, imploded oh Michelle, you do it. <laughs> oh no, poor okay. Michelle, like you don't do enough. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah, all right, any more uh, conversation or discussion regarding the Webster Times and or hiring <laughs> protocol? Nope. nope, just want to make sure we are crossing our T's and dotting our I's. Oh. I don't want anybody in trouble. No, no, yes. we definitely don't want no. anyone in trouble. Thank you very no. much. All right. Peter called me last week and said, "I apologize for not having the list to you. We're still we're still updating it, um, and you know, so I do think that it is high up on their priority list. It's yeah. just like I said, you know, it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened yet. But I do keep asking, <laughs> especially after I saw that on the agenda. <laughs> uh, well, that's all it was in regards to. Was just." Yeah. I wanted to know where it stood. Why did it happen? You know, I, I didn't go rogue. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't think that you did. <laughs> Which is what it sounded like. Did. I know it did. But, um, but you know, I, I asked the question and, and yeah. I got nothing. And so, you know, I can't sit around and not, you know, get somebody to fill the spot. So yeah. I did the best I could with what I had. Um, but I did ask the questions. I shudder to think at the most of times is watching the video. <laughs> the library director did not go rogue. That will be the headline next week. Oh. I don't know where that goes after that. Oh, that no, could be no, a no. beginning with something. Uh, anyone else? Anything else? I just figured I was going to get the news point. from the source here. <laughs> right. I was going to get the correct information versus you know, Joyce, what I really I appreciate you asking too. Yeah, I mean, instead of just assuming, yeah. you know. I have no problem. I, I just, you know, I did I did what I was supposed to do. Yeah. I asked the questions. I just didn't, you know, it didn't quite get just a matter of yeah. interpretation, mm -hmm. I guess. So. Anyone, anything else? Mm -hmm. Just a reminder, if you will, the uh, signing policy, a signature policy that we have, that we have currently is still in effect, mm -hmm. although we are open to discussion down the road. Uh, and our next meeting will be October 30th. Uh, and I will the not be here October 12th for signing. October 12th, I will not be available. Uh, well, I might be able to come back Monday and do it, but ooh, that's touchy. Mondays aren't a good day for me always. Well, and hopefully October we 12th, have enough hands I'm on deck. I'm at, I'm at my orientation, people. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, we'll hopefully have enough hands on deck so that we can cover for you, Joyce. <clears throat> Anyone, anything else to bring up this evening? Second? Second? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?